Leave me in cold. Oh, God. There's so many bad things I can say about that. Oh! Goodness. Wiping it away. Hi, this is Buster Graham, and you're watching WGS TV. You have worked your way back into another episode of Double D Plays The Tour of Fantasy right here on WGS TV. I'm a Russell Gamer. Double D Play Bujo, and on the last episode, Ardina has seen us off, and apparently she's given uh, uh, Ray Lynn a, a, a strange type of a compass, which is supposed to point them in the correct direction of the star. So, now uh, we begin our expedition into the Myers. It was a long trip from the capital to the walls. The guards at the walls had pleaded with us not to leave. But that obviously wasn't something we could do. The green grassy plains quickly gave way to sickeningly, to sickeningly and disgusting swamp. All of this filth and decay that I'm walking through now. It's strangely familiar. I can't quite remember where I've seen anything like this before, though. Thick, sickly-looking undergrowth creeps across fetid ground. It's as, if the, it's as if the plants are swallowing the very land with their withered growth. Merely taking a step is enough to make your blood turn to ice. The squelching noise that echoes from stepping on the ground is nauseating. The vines hanging in front of my face seem to have warts and cysts growing on them. Oh, that's disgusting. Everything about this place is dark, damp, and disgusting. Well, yeah, I just said that. The sun barely makes it through the, can the canopy, giving us only a few rays of light to see where we're walking. I can't help but notice that it feels like we're being watched, too. Wherever I Whenever I went to the gardens in the capital, they were always bursting with life and animals. Here, everything is silent. It's, it's as if the entire forest is dead. Yet I was told there were all kinds of beasts that wandered the mires. Are they all hiding from us? Or can we sim simply not see them in the dark undergrowth? Kira seems to, be, oh, it seems to not be so worried about her surroundings, though. Looking at her push, looking at her push forward fiercely renews my own resolve. Gwen isn't coping so well, though. Everything here feels wrong. It's all filthy and cankerous. I knew the books I read described this as a sickness, but it's different to see it in person. All this foul mud, slime, vines, and insects. Well, all right, we need to reassure her. It'll be all right, Gwen. Stop talking. Spend more time listening. Kira's acting as the instructor once again. We try to follow the path Kira makes for us through the mud, but even then, it's hard work. Gwen seems to be having the most trouble with it. All those skipped training sessions to attend her, schol her scholar uh, scholarly duties have caught up with her. Her armor is coated with mud and other foul substances. She looks absolutely miserable. So much mud. Why must there be so much mud? Kira, Kira barely looks back when she responds. Because it's swampland. While that's true, she could be a, more, a bit more sympathetic than that. Come on, Gwen, you'll be fine. There will be lots of hot baths when we get home. My words only seem to make her more unhappy. When will we get home, then? When we retrieve the star. <coughs> Pardon me. The Empress wouldn't be pleased if we returned without it. Hearing that really upsets Gwen. But she does her best not to show it. She doesn't want to falter before we even get there. I would trade my noble birth for some courage right now. Don't worry, Kira. Kira and I are here. You're going to be fine. That comforts her a little bit. Just enough for her to keep going. This is going to be a very long trip for all of us, I think. We have to keep our spirits up if we're going to make it to the star. 
We don't even know if it's actually landed in the Myers, either. It was somewhere far to the north. I'm not sure how far. There hasn't been anyone who ventured beyond the Myers in a very long time. It's unknown what lies beyond this foul swamp. What if there's even darker places waiting for us ahead of this rancid forest? Oh, what the fuck was that? I hate it when, they, when this game does sound jump scares. God damn it! <clears throat> I hate it because it sneaks up on you and you can't even see it coming. God damn! As we walk along, something splatters me in the face, causing me to stop. Whatever it is, it's slimy and cold. Oh, God. There's so many bad things I could say about that. Oh, goodness. Wiping it away from my eyes, I look down at myself. It's some kind of slime. And it's moving by itself. Thick goo begins to creep its way up my legs. G get off me right now! My words don't seem to matter to it, though. Its advances doesn't stop for a single moment. Panic sits in and I desperately try to scrape it off. Gwen and Kira have already walked ahead. They can't help me now. It doesn't seem... It does not seem to help, however. It's already up to my thighs and quickly gaining more ground. <laughs> more great globs of slime pile onto me, seemingly emerging out of nowhere. As it begins to envelop me, I can feel a tingling sensation across my skin. To my horror, I realize that the slime is devouring my clothes. <laughs> Small patches of cloth begin to dissolve in front of my eyes. Leaving, leaving my skin completely uncovered. My armor plates are also being eaten. I have to get this off me, now. I can't lose my armor. But as I plunge my hands into it in an attempt to get it off, all it does is move around them and get an even stronger grip on me. Now my hands are bound by slime. What remains of my armor begins to rapidly dissolve as the slime gets a firmer grip on my body. Bit by bit, the cloth disappears following followed by the metal plates. No matter how hard I try to struggle against it, it's to no avail. Attempting to fight it only seems to cause it to cling to me even tighter. I can't help but shiver as more and more of the translucent slime piles onto me. It's crawling across my chest now, eating any armor it finds along the way. My entire body is enveloped by goo now. I can feel it moving across every inch of my skin. This is such an embarrassing experience. I can't stop myself from blushing as I feel it crawling all over me. I can hold no secrets from this slime. It won't stop until it finds absolutely everything it can, can, it can devour. What's even worse is I can't stop it. All I can do is wait until it's done. It's not long before most of my skin is bare. All of the items on my belt have been eaten too. A long time passes before the slime finally lets me go. I can't tell how many times it's crawled all over me before it finally gave up on finding, any, finding more food. Once it disappears back into the ground, the only thing I have left to cover myself with is my hands. It didn't even leave me with any weapons. Now that I'm completely nude and sprawling in the mud, <laughs> I've only just realized how cold it is in the mires! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my entire body is quaking from the chilly air. Oh, good thing she didn't mention her nips. It's strange to feel so cold, and yet my face is so warm from blushing. Kira? Gwen? Is anyone out there? Raylan, what are you? She stops and averts her eyes as she catches a glimpse of my, a glimpse of my nude form. Raylan? For a moment, she struggles to find what she wants to say. I hope there's a, there is a good explanation for this. Gwen quickly follows from behind. She opens her mouth to say something, but thinks better of it. This might be a problem. So what happened to you? Did you decide to take off your armor for some reason? A uh, slime ate my armor. A slime? Oh, those slimes. I remember those foul things myself. I told you there were monsters which destroyed armor out here. Luckily, the slimes aren't that dangerous beyond that. What you encountered was a cloth eater. For whatever reason, it had an appetite for leather and cloth, not to mention carrion. Kind of like those moths which nest in clo uh, clothing. 
Never mind that. I don't need an explanation for it. Just does anyone have any spare clothing? It's so cold. Relax, Merlin. I told you that I'd prepare ahead of time. After all, I was the one who warned you about this. How did you know about the slimes anyway, Gwen? It's in an old book that I own. This isn't relevant. Please, can you give me anything to wear? Anything at all? Even if it's just an old sack. <laughs> Reaching to her bag, she pulls out a fresh change of armor. It's tailored exactly like my old armor. I'm not really sure how she got a spare armor, spare pair of armor for me, but I'm not about to complain. I immediately pull, pull all of it on, not willing to stand naked in the cold mire air. Thank you so much. Why didn't you say something earlier? That's what I want to know. Slime covered my mouth before I could say anything. Believe me, I tried to get your attention. It stopped me from moving, too. That's true. The slimes do bind things before they devour them. I think it would be best if Kira stays up the back for now. Agreed. If anything smears me, I know how to deal with it. You really have me worried there, Raylan. Please be more careful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just happened so fast. Well, you should be even faster then. Come on, we've wasted more than enough time here. Well, before we go any further, guys and girls, we're going to go ahead and call it an episode on the next one. Hopefully we won't see, uh, see any more cloth-eating slimes. Or maybe. Anyway. With that being said, guys and girls, I am the rest of you. Double D, one of you guys say, we'll see you at the next work zone. I know it works on top of it. But it's green on the hill. It's cool good. It's the sun. I'm on the end of the moon. I can raise my skin. I'm Tana from New Japan Pro Wrestling. And she has really garnered a huge reputation for herself. I've gotten to see some of her work and... By far, 